Hi, this is Sergey from AWS. In this video, we're going to take a look at migration planning phase of the migration process. Once we have successfully completed discovery and identified applications and workloads ready for migration, we can start working on the planning stage. Although we did probably already complete some of the work during the analysis, such as preliminary cost calculations, the bulk of planning happens after discovery has been completed and we finish mapping out the customer's existing on-premises environment. The goal here is to prepare for the migration plan, which is the detailed analysis that outlines the resources and costs of the migrations along with the resulting savings. We should also include the migration strategy for each application, specify priority, resource allocation, and identify tools to help facilitate the migration. This is the master plan for the migration that will be used on board all stakeholders involved and will be referenced throughout the process. Let's take a look at the details involved in the project plan. Specifically, the project plan should determine how much it is going to cost to migrate to the AWS and estimate the savings we'll get from the cloud and also try to potentially estimate some other business benefits as well. Here, our simple monthly cost calculator, along with the data we collected during the discovery stage, could come in handy. As part of the project planning, it is also important to identify and agree on the length of the targeted migration. This will determine our migration and cutover strategy and will help select tools that are most appropriate for this project. Please keep in mind that migrations require high data consistency and near zero downtime, although in theory sound very appealing, could in fact require considerable planning and preparation and require additional tools and fairly complex automation and could be very costly. As part of the project plan and migration timeframe, we also need to figure out which workloads will migrate and when. We need to assign resources that will be responsible for migrating each workload. This should be documented in detailed inventory for each workload in prioritized backlog. This backlog is very, very important and becomes the backbone for our later stages, which we refer to as the migration factory. This is also a good time to start working on architecting and designing the operational landing zone for AWS environment. We can run this in parallel with the project planning stage, and we'll cover this in more detail in the design section. But at this point, we should have enough requirements to get started on this. During planning, we need to select the appropriate migration strategy for each application workload that we identified during the discovery stage. Typically, some workloads can be completely retired, and some are just not yet ready for cloud migration. Those we, we could just exclude from the migration plan. We should still document those in the project plan for consistency and transparency. But for others, we need to pick the appropriate migration strategy. The four main ones that we'll talk about are rehost, which is often referred to as lift and shift, and typically the simplest, which is clone and the server to the cloud with minimal changes. Replatform, which involves a bit more work. We may substitute OS version or CPU architecture in the process. Repurchase, which is replacing on-premises workloads with equivalent managed cloud services, such as switching CRM solution to cloud-based SaaS CRM solution. And refactor, which is by far the most complex and typically involves changing application source code to take advantage of cloud services. We'll dive deeper into each of this during the design stage. Regardless of which strategy you choose, make sure you have a well-documented validation and contingency plans in place to know what to do in case migration does not pass acceptance tests. It is critical to understand the metrics for successful migrations have a clear path to back out from the migration in case things don't go as planned. Before proceeding to design stage, we need to come up with a series of tests that will determine if our migration is, is successful. This should be clearly documented in our project plan. As part of this, we also need to figure out how we're going to cut over to the cloud and how we're going to handle potential downtime. This is a good time to review our business requirements for each application, which will help us determine the recovery time objectives and select the appropriate cutover strategy for each application. Once we have our acceptance tests, we need to make sure that we identify all stakeholders and have very clear escalation path in case there are any issues. Stakeholders need to be fully aware of the migration plan and we highly recommend involving them in test planning stages. Another point often overlooked during acceptance testing is the application performance. Success criteria should be tied to application business needs as well as the comparison of the baseline performance. Do not assume the application migrating to the cloud would perform as well as on-premises. Sizing and capacity estimation errors could be very costly. 
So we need to account for application performance as part of our testing cycle. Resource planning is a big part of project plan. We recommend creating separate teams to handle multiple workloads. This way you can run different migration phases in parallel. Also, if one team runs into any issues, it will most likely not interrupt other teams. They can continue to move forward through their backlog and this reduces dependencies and speeds up the migration process overall. And just to summarize, at the end of the planning stage, we need to have completed a full detailed project plan. We finalized the migration strategy for each application and prepared prioritized migration backlog. We have validation and contingency plans in place and all key stakeholders know their roles and they're updated on the plan. We also allocated resources and teams to all workloads and started to work on the landing zone architecture. And we're finally ready to proceed to the design stage. Thank you for watching.